So we carry on with our explanation for chapter uh, two, and which is about rolling stock systems. And today we'll be talking about one of the most important concepts, which is about vehicle dynamics. How do you understand vehicle dynamics and the forces and the loads and the movement that affects the vehicle and control the vehicle? Without further ado, let's start. It's important to note that this would not be a full, uh, uh, explanation of vehicle uh, dynamics. It's a complete uh, science and there are many, many research and publications around this topic. But what we I need to do is to just to give you a group of introductory concepts that you need always to know as someone working in the railway industry. And we can go uh, farther and show you some of the things that can be done and what you can do if you are working in the area of railway vehicle dynamics. Hopefully you can be a, a design engineer who's responsible for the wheel sets or who's responsible for the vehicle design, or you can be responsible for the maintenance of the track and you need to understand the loads that is being introduced by vehicles. So there are very, very highly professional areas where you can work in if you have been specialized in railway vehicle dynamics. So in this section, we'll talk about rail profile and wheel profile. We talk about the contact condition, this small area, which is transfer the load of the train to the infrastructure. Uh, of course, the small area between the wheel and the rail across all the wheels. We'll talk about uh, 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 suspension elements and modes of vibration. How does the, 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 uh, how does the vehicle sus uh, sus uh, absorb high frequency and low frequency vibrations? as well as what are the modes of movement of this uh, vehicle. And this is a standard steady state curving behavior. How does the vehicle uh, behave uh, on curves? Then we'll talk about vehicle ride and passenger comfort, uh, comfort and we'll talk about railway track defects. Specifically, we'll, we'll mention rolling contact fatigue, but we'll talk about them in general. So this is the rail profile, and this is a standard rail profile. This is UIC 60. So remember this UIC 60 is a very standard rail profile that is being used across the world, 60 kilogram per meter with an inclination one in 20 and a gauge of 1,435 millimeter, which is called the standard gauge. So this is the UIC 60 rail and it has very limited uh, and there are other rails but they have very limited use such as UIC 54 and 60 means 60 kilogram per meter. It has a standard geometry so the web here has a standard geometry the flange has a standard geometry and as well as the uh, 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 what's called the gauge corner or the top of the of the rail. So these are standard rail that is being used across the world. Of course, some countries don't use this, uh, for example, the, the same gauge, there are different gauges, but in general, this is the standard. So also the wheel has a standard and one of the famous wheels is the PR British Rail B80 and use one in 20 cone. So what we means by a cone is this shape. So if that was a, a perfect, a triangle, then this would be a, a, a cone or a semi cone. And, uh, and this is about the geometry. So this is this will be the flange of the wheel. And this the blue line shows a perfect wheel, uh, a brand new wheel and the red line show the wheel after interaction with the rail for some time. So it has been worn. And this is the area which will be, uh, will be uh, affected by wear. And the wheel is uh, uh, touch the gauge face. So this is the flange face and the gauge face. This is the gauge corner and this is the flange root. This is the area where, where the, all the contact happens. And this is the wheel tread uh, rail tail. And this is where the contact batch will be that all contact stress will happen between the wheel and the rail, uh, between the wheel and the rail here. So there are different wheels, but one of the famous profile is P8, uh, British Rail P8 and British Rail P5, which is used in freight vehicles. 
every country has their own standards or there are different standards, but in general, there is a standard geometry for the wheel set. And uh, there is a, a, a wheel called P20, which is designed to reduce rolling contact fatigue, which is a problem that occur uh, and it create internal cracks within the wheel and within the rail. So now we need to talk about the contact condition, the contact between the wheel and the rail. So there, the contact pressure would be, will be a distributed load, this area, an area load, which will be acting across this area between the wheel and the uh, between the wheel and the rail, transferring the load. The conditions of this contact can be understood as a Hertzian contact. And if you are a mechanical engineer, you should be familiar what is a Hertzian contact. And that contact stress depends on dynamic wheel load, diameter of the wheel shape of the wheel and the rail conicity and other geometry will set lateral position there are it can be a narrow contact area it can be a wider contact area but in general it's a very small small contact area that can be the shape of a coin that's the contact patch this is across all wheels is what is responsible on transferring that great dynamic load from the trains to the the uh, to the rails Suspension elements. So we have now we'll be talking about suspension elements. So we took about it took about this is the uh, contact batch. So it has a Hertz contact. It's a spring, and you can understand this with uh, the spring coefficient. And if you want to calculate the loads, then it it, uh, it transfer the load to a primary suspension system, and this is the bogie which has a mass which connects the axles together. So, and this is the secondary suspension system, and this is the car body, and also the car body has a mass. So this is a simple illustration. This is a damper, and this is a damper which has a coefficient, and uh, it has its own calculations. So this will help you to understand the contact and the energy transfer between the Hertz contact and the car body. The secondary suspension uh, system is responsible for removing low vibrations. The primary suspension system is responsible for removing high vibrations. And the Hertz contact takes all the load from the vehicle or from the infrastructure. You need to understand, you to be familiar with these concepts to be able to do the right calculations. So I would like to talk about vehicle modes of vibrations or vehicle modes of movement. There is longitudinal movement, there is a lateral movement, and there is a, a vertical mo movement. But it's also, a there is a rotational movement. There is a bitch, and there is a yo, which is a lateral rotational movement. There is yo, which is a vertical rotational movement, and there is a roll, which is a, 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 longitud a longitudinal rotational movement. These are the movements and the stress and the direction of stresses that will con uh, control the behavior of the vehicle, and you should be familiar with them. Now, it's important to talk about speed and conicity, and we mentioned that conicity is uh, uh, that uh, small cone that uh, that might make the shape of the wheel and uh, of the wheel. So if you don't have conicity, low conicity, and if the train is going at a low speed, you would have unstable train. This is making a haunting movement, that haunting movement. If you have a very high, a, a high conicity and a high speed, also you will have that ha haunting movement. And to have a stable movement, something that is straight, going straight right at a, at a, at a fixed, uh, within a fixed area, and this is the stable area, you should have uh, 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 the right amount of speed and conicity. So you should have, you should uh, aim for stability in your wheel and uh, in wheel design and the speed of the vehicle. Now we'll talk about Curving behavior. How does vehicle be, behave around curves? They are. They will be subjected to a centrifugal force, and uh, of course, they will be subjected to their uh, to the force of their weight. 
So they, this is centrifugal force and this is weight. And both of these forces would have a resultant force which goes in this direction. Now, what is important to know this angle, this angle, the angle of the ground is called count or super elevation. And this angle of the vehicle is called also uh, another vehicle. If this angle, the angle of the vehicle is lower than the uh, vehicle of the ground, we say this is Kant deficiency. And it, it happens at high speed. If this angle of the vehicle is uh, higher than the angle of the ground, we say this is Kant excess. And usually you aim for Kant deficiency, so uh, passengers feel a little bit of a centrifugal force, so they have that passenger comfort feeling around curves. So we will be doing uh, a detailed calculations of these on a, on a separate section just to explain this in details. It's dynamic 101 or static 101. Track and wheel defects. So the track and the wheel does not have, does not stay the same, does not have the same condition. It changed with usage, it changed with time, it changed with those impact loads that they have. And they introduce different kinds of defects. There are a defects called squats, and of course, wear. And sometimes you have missing elements, and sometimes you have rail brakes, and there are other kinds of defects. So you would be knowing more about rail defects and what kind of defects might happen between the uh, as a result of the interaction between the wheel and the rail. And there is uh, and there is many maintenance regimes that aim to remove these defects. So sometimes, if you have internal and uh, internal rail and wheel cracks, this will result on a, a, on a failure called rolling contact fatigue (RCF), uh, and this can be detected detected using ultrasonic testing. So you, you uh, subject the rail or the wheel to ultrasonic test and you say they might be an ultra, uh, they might be a failure, uh, a defect in this area. So, and uh, there are of course some defects that you can see them by, uh, uh, by eye through uh, visual uh, 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 inspection or through cameras. Uh, and you would always try to include them within your, your maintenance regime, to, and we'll talk about this in detail. So, but in, a, in, a, in a bit. But T gamma and RCF, T gamma is a concept related to uh, one of the concepts that is associated with measuring the defect, and RCF, rolling contact fatigues, the possibility of rolling contact fatigue happening, they increase with cur curvature, primary or stiffness, cancer plus conformal wheel rail pairs and vertical vehicle weight. So these would affect the possibility of having a rolling contact fatigue. Now to overcome the wheel and the different effects of the wheel and the rail, you would do grinding, lathing and replacing mechanisms to the impacted assets. And sometimes you would increase your Kant deficiency to make sure you would have a lower damage and a lower impact. This is some of the things that would be uh, happening on um, on a vehicle and uh, on, a, on, on, a, on, a, on the wheel or rail. And we will be talking about, uh, we, I think this will be the end of the section. I hope you, it was clear for you. And that was railway, rail wheel vehicle dynamics or railway vehicle dynamics. We talked about rail profile, wheel profile. We talked about uh, suspension elements. We talked about contact uh, conditions and contact stress. We talked about uh, different uh, modes of movement. We talked about track defects. So these are introductory concepts for you to be able to in enter the world of railway vehicle dynamics, which is a very big world with many, many publications and research. Have a great evening and see you in the next section.